Do you have frequent diarrhea and bloating? Modern diets can be a major contributor to diarrhea. We've previously discussed how fructose can cause diarrhea, and in this video, we'll discuss another common sugar and its contribution to IBS, lactose. Many sugars in your diet cannot be directly absorbed by your GI tract, but must first be broken down into single units that can then be pumped through the intestine and journey into the bloodstream. Lactose is a two unit sugar and therefore it can't cross the intestinal barrier until it's broken down into its subunits. It's made up of glucose and galactose and an enzyme called lactase cleaves those two apart so that the glucose and the galactose can be separately absorbed by our intestine. Mammals produce lactase to break down lactose, which is a major sugar in their mother's milk. Past infancy, there's no need for a goat to continue to produce lactase because now they eat grass. Humans are unique amongst mammals because we herd other mammals and we drink their milk well into adulthood. And so it very much behooves us that we produce lactase past infancy. But this is the result of a mutation, one that occurred in different parts of the world maybe around 10,000 years ago but it's not one that is uniform amongst our entire species. And so there's many of us that can comfortably digest milk past infancy, but there's also many of us who cannot. And so this is what it means to be lactose intolerant. You're actually normal. You don't continue to produce lactase just like all your other mammal friends. And so past infancy, you can't digest milk the way some of your other human friends can. And because you cannot break down lactose in your small intestine, it travels down into your colon where colonic bacteria can break it down. And they produce as byproducts a lot of gas. And that's the reason that a person who's lactose intolerant has gas, bloating, and diarrhea. And again, I wanna emphasize that being lactose intolerant is actually normal. And if you can continue to digest milk, well then you're the mutant. It's like a mutant superpower to continue to be able to chug milk past infancy. Now, even people who made lactase in their early childhood may eventually find that its production wanes. When it does, the foods like milk and ice cream that they used to throw caution to wind when eating will now cause them to pass wind. It's not uncommon for these patients to have new diarrhea, and they'll attend a GI clinic to be evaluated for this when ultimately simply cutting back dairy helps relieve the symptoms. How much you produce lactase varies, and after a bad GI illness, your intestines may not be producing as much as they were before you were sick. As a result, you may not tolerate dairy quite as well, and it can sometimes take weeks for this to come back to its normal volume. How can you enjoy some dairy if you're lactose intolerant? Well, it depends on if you're lactose intolerant or if you have a dairy allergy. If you have an immune-mediated condition of the allergy, then you're gonna be sensitive to even very small stimulus. And that's because your immune system needs to be exquisitely sensitive to something like a small virus. And so if you have an allergy to dairy, it's not gonna take much at all to provoke a big response. So if you are dairy intolerant because of an allergy, you just have to avoid it. But if you're lactose intolerant because you don't make a lot of lactase enzyme, then you may be able to tolerate small portions. And that's because you might still have a little residual capacity to break down lactose sugars. So a person who is simply lactase deficient may do well to simply spread their dairy enjoyment throughout the day. A big bowl of ice cream is gonna probably prove to be way too much, but a little bit of cream in your coffee should do just fine. If you really love a bowl of cereal in the morning, milk's gonna do you wrong for the rest of the day, but oat milk or almond milk will be very well tolerated and is a great substitute for dairy milk. Some ranch dressing drizzled on your salad at lunch or some Parmesan cheese sprinkled atop your pasta for your dinner should be perfectly well tolerated for many people who are lactase deficient. Now it's worth emphasizing that some people have such a complete absence of lactase that they really may not be able to tolerate any at all. But there are some cheese and other dairy products that are relatively low in lactose that'll be appropriate for many people. Whey is the protein byproduct of dairy production. It's used by bodybuilders as a bulking powder and by food manufacturers to lend a tangy or creamy taste to food products like chips. It's worth being aware of if you're vegan because it's not a vegan product or if you're a person who has a dairy allergy because it could be a trigger. Whey has minimal amounts of lactose residual within it, and so it should be just fine for those people who are lactase deficient. Yogurt can also happen to have relatively low amounts of lactose because the active cultures within it break down lactose and form lactic acid, lending it that tangy taste. And thankfully, some key cheeses like mozzarella are actually low in lactose, and that's a great thing because that's what you top a pizza with. Now, pizza can be a GI bomb for some other reasons. The fructans or glutens in the crust, other dairy sensitivities, the tomato paste causing GERD, 
or just because you ate the entire pizza. If you're looking for a good lactose substitute, a good marker is whether the product is labeled being vegan, because this will be dairy-free. Vegans being creative people have found a plethora of dairy substitutes, everything from cheese to ice cream to milk, and so if you look for that vegan label, you can be assured that that's likely going to be lactose-free. I hope you found this information helpful. Please subscribe to the channel and explore other content because there's a lot here discussing the effects of our diet on irritable bowel syndrome. Thank you and be safe.